All right, here's a little video I'm making up on uh, reflow soldering at home for Luxon LEDs on the metal PCBs with a hot plate. This is by no means anything professional. Uh, here's my setup here using this double sided hot plate, calibrated on both sides with uh, a thermocouple from a multimeter. Downloaded some reflow soldering characteristics. I'm not following these perfectly by any means, but this one on the left here is put out by Luxon for the Rebel LEDs, and it's their ramp up temperature. You can see that uh, they're calling for a preheat temperature between 300 and 390 Fahrenheit at a time somewhere between 60 and 180 seconds, and ramp up over about a 40 second period up to a peak of 500 degrees Fahrenheit and cooling again. Um, you can download this. It's page 8 of the Luxon Rebel data sheet to look at it more closely. And here's a paper put out by Intercell as just a general guideline for soldering surface mount components to PC boards. And the parts that I'm paying somewhat attention to is the preheat zone. Boards should be between 220 and 290. Time above solder melting point. Time above uh, 180 C, which is 356 degrees Fahrenheit. It range from 10 seconds to 150 seconds. Peak reflow temperatures for IR methods, which isn't quite what we're doing here, but between 426 and 437. And this chapter here, the cooling rate of the solder joint after reflow is important because the faster the cooling rate, the smaller the grain size of the solder, and the higher the fatigue resistance. However, care should be taken to avoid excessive temperature gradient resulting in potential damage due to mechanical stress. So basically you want to cool it relatively quickly, but uh, not so fast that it places undue stress upon the LED and maybe uh, separates separation of the die from the bond wires or uh, the dome or something along those lines. So here's my metal core PCBs. I'm only going to be doing four this time. And Luxon Rebel LEDs, I've got four of those. I've done them in batches as large as 50 at once or five at once. And here's my uh, solder paste, which is some cheap Chinese stuff that I don't really have any characteristics on. But uh, in general, the solder paste that I found online have melting temps anywhere between 354 Fahrenheit and 422 Fahrenheit. I've set my hot plate 300 degrees Fahrenheit on the left side for preheating and 470 degrees Fahrenheit on the right for melting temps and I've used these temps successfully in the past so here we go solder paste is quite thick I think I'm using a 14 or 16 gauge blunt tip syringe takes a significant amount of pressure to get anything out of it as you can see. And the pads we'll want to cover are right here's the heat slug for the LED and the cathode and finally the anode. Um, anywhere up from 75 percent coverage up to 100 percent coverage will give about the same heat flow but too much and the LED won't sit flush and then you'll get bad heat flow characteristics. I try and place a blob. It's not really a science, it's more a matter of feel and intuition. Um, I've been pretty lucky with these so far. I'd say out of a hundred, I've probably only had maybe three 
but I've had to go back and reflow again. Uh, after I'm done, I'll use the meter to check for continuity and shorts before I apply power. These are a neutral white 90 lumen Rebel LED I got from LED Supply for something like 75 cents each. And I just dropped one on the floor. Send that off to God. Apply just a little bit of downward pressure to keep it in place. And these are ready to go. I'll place them on the board for preheat. I've noticed with this hot plate, this bottom region's a lot hotter. It doesn't heat so evenly like uh, maybe a professional laboratory one would. And while that's doing that, I'll put a little bit of water over here on my ceramic tile cooling area. And uh, I'll kind of just hit the corner of that a little bit with the boards. This should preheat for about 60 seconds, so I will probably edit that part out of the video. You should always keep this in the refrigerator. It has a tendency to dry up on you. And then take it out in plenty of time to warm up before you uh, try and get it to come out of the syringe. Uh, pardon all the mess on the workbench I've always got projects going alright it's been a lot less than 60 seconds but I can see this solder is already turning shiny and starting to change colors so I'm going to move it over to the other side here And we may have already missed some of this, but when it gets good and hot, you'll see surface temperature of the LEDs, or surface temp the LEDs will move when this liquidizes. Okay, I see some wetting action going on with the solder down below. I think we're about there, so take this off. It on the ceramic, kind of edge it into the water a little. Let's take this meter over here in diode check mode. Let's see if we use a light. All right, one more time here. We're going to take this fluke meter in diode check mode and check for electrical conductivity of these LEDs that we just reflowed. You can see that first one lights up, lights up, lights up, lights up.
So electrically everything's fine. Another step we want to do is we want to pick it up and visually inspect it from a real flat angle all the way around. Let's see if it appears the LEDs have lifted any off the board and they look just fine. And if you have any excessive solder balls or anything sticking off the side, take something pointy, a small pick or whatever, drag them off, especially on the solder resist areas. I only found one on this and I got that off camera. So uh, we're fine. Successful reflow. All right, well, in the second attempt here, I've actually got a little more solder than I wanted to. But uh, I think it'll be okay. Wish I could figure out how to make this focus better. Well, onto the preheat side. Uh, we're around 20 seconds in. Starting to get a little smoke. It's been a minute since I started this video. So I'd say maybe 40 seconds on the preheat. Ten more seconds and I'm going to move it over to the melt side. Now we're getting good smoke. Flux is burning off. Starting to see some bright colored solder. Oh, and now getting good wetting action out of the sides. Still bubbling, still burning off some of the flux. And that's enough, it's ready to come off. see some brown flux off the sides. I think I did put a little bit too much solder on this one, but I think it's still going to work. Let's uh, use our diode check mode to check for electrical conductivity first. Let me try and bear with me as I try and do this all but only two hands. That one's fine. That one's also lighting up. And we have a problem here. We have uh, something is shorted out. I have too much solder paste in the anode and the cathode have probably shorted out. Which is a real nuisance on this triple. I'm going to have to try again. All right, I re reflowed that number three LED. Let's see if I was able to get any of the solder out and fix that bridged connection. Problem solved. Alright, I know that's horrible camera work. See, electrically this thing works fine now. We want to look at it at that flat angle that I mentioned earlier. I actually think I have a little lifting of that second LED as well. 
What you can do while you're soldering is physically push down and put some pressure on it. Normally I don't need to.